Put a smile on your face when you're moving from place to place. Welcome back to the morning show on Tobago Update. I am Adana Kambi and in studio we'll be speaking with Superintendent Rodel Clark, Rodel Kirk, sorry, as he gives us updates from the TTPS, what has been happening on the island of Tobago. And we're also going to be speaking about receiving stolen goods. Good morning, Superintendent, and welcome to our show. Good morning, Adana, and good morning, Tobago. Happy to be here. Right, we're always happy to have you and, of course, to know of what has been happening on our island over the past week and the weekend. Right. What I can tell you is that this week and this weekend was had a, a number of activities. We first kicked off with the Great Race celebrations. Uh, you know, many expected that because of the inclement weather, they may not have had the attendance that they did, but I understand that thousands of people were at uh, Stobie taking in the celebrations. And then yesterday, we had the Castara Fisherman's Fete. That in itself, too, was overwhelmed with the participation of, of the Tobago public and, by, by extension, the persons who are visiting the island at this time. So I, I believe it was a success. What I have to report is that there was there were no major incidents, thank, thank God. I also want to thank my officers for their <laughs> quick response, which led to a, a person being saved. A car plunged about 100 feet down a precipice. The passing patrol would have detected that something went wrong. They found the person down at that precipice. I want to thank these officers for, you know, reaching out and responding to showing a level of dedication. I also want to thank the, the responders, like the TEMA fire service, persons who were passing by that assisted as well. It shows that we still have love in our, in our island. That's right. So that is one of the good things that, that happened over the weekend. We have no major crimes reported, no major serious crimes. Just, you know, a few, one and two, well, at least about two house break-ins. And, you know, as we're on that topic, we have seen the increase in house breaking and general larcenies on the island. And... It is, I believe, because there is a market for these goods when they are stolen. But I want to urge Tobago people, do not buy stolen goods. There is, a, there is an offense under Section 35 of the Larceny Act, which is receiving goods knowing them to be stolen. And when I say that, you know, it, it's, once you engage in that activity, you are part of the problem. So, you know, if, if, if there's no market for these items, maybe the perpetrators might limit their activities where that is concerned. So what I want to urge people is that you yourself could face the brunt of the court if you partake in purchasing these items from persons. You know, um, it's something that should be discouraged, notwithstanding that you may pay for it. You see, when you look at certain considerations that may take place during the investigation, your iPhone might cost ten thousand dollars, and this person bring it and sell it to you for a thousand. That is a red flag. So you have to be mindful as the individual who 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 purchases these items. So if you purchase that, the inference may be drawn that you know that there was something wrong, right? And you buy that, although you may legitimately pay for it, you could end up paying for it elsewhere in the court if you are found wanting. So I just want to encourage people to you know. Yes, I know. I, I know that, of course, purchasing items that you know to be stolen is an offense. But what about if you purchase an item that is stolen, but you're unaware that it was stolen? For instance, the same iPhone, let's say the iPhone costs $10,000 and somebody comes selling it to me for 1000 But their case is that it's refurbished or something has happened to it and we just, you know... Is, a, is not a brand new iPhone or whatever. So the pri they justify the, the fact that the price is ridiculously lower than it would be on the market. Well, in that case, I'm saying that every case will be judged on its own merit. Mm -hmm. So it it's determines, if, if the investigation determines that that is so, well, that is, you know, that will be taken into consideration. But if not, you know, you will, you know, find yourself in, in, in hot water. Yeah. Right. yeah, and you know, it's, it's just mischief, you know, mischief. Mm -hmm. and of course you have to apply good judgment and good sense because exactly. as you rightfully said, if something costs on the market, in the marketplace it costs $10,000 and you're selling it to me for $1,000, I'm 
I would want to do all my investigations to find out, well, where did you get this item? Yes. How are you selling it so cheaply? Something must be exactly. suspicious As about it. As a potential buyer, you must do your due diligence when you are not buying it from a legitimate place of, of sale, as the case may be. Do your due diligence so that you could, you know, at least satisfy yourself that the items that you are about to purchase have some legitimacy in it. So you have to do that to safeguard yourself, right? Exactly. Or just buy from the, um, the original The original merchant. piece. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the um, home break-ins. Because as I know you said there were two over the weekend or within the last right. week or something like that. Right. What we found is that persons are moving around most likely in the night. And they may enter premises, um, you know, break and enter and steal goods. I realize that they are stealing uh, flat screen televisions, jewelry, tools, etc. So I'm urging people, you know, um, we can't stop everything from happening. But at the same time, what I'm urging people to do is to, to try to mitigate against these things by either putting additional security measures, whether it be cameras, whether it be reinforced doors and windows, to prevent, to sort of mitigate these things from happening. In respect to the last thing is, what we find happening is that people leave, although it's your property, as someone said, and no one has the right to come in your, your yard and teeth your, your brush cutter or some kind of thing. You must do some kind of, you know, don't just leave it lying around. Right? Do something to mitigate or prevent that from happening. So this is what we are urging people to do. Right? Because yes, it's yours. Nobody has the right to walk in the yard and take it up. But at the same time, if you put it there, you create an attraction for the person who just go about and, 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 and pick up people's things. Because we have some mischievous people on the island, right? Not everybody, not everyone are upstanding citizens. And people really, um, as you said, you make it attractive. As unfair as it sounds, you make it attractive to the person who wants to make mischief, to make their hand fast, as we would say here in Tobago. You know, so it really is important to add that extra measure of security to your property. And how do you suggest we do some of these things? I know we spoke about um, installing cameras and stuff like that, which is an added expense to the proprietor. But what are some of the measures that one should take to, to secure their property? Well, you know, one of the, one of the philosophy that I, I want to talk about, someone once told me, if you think... Um, good health expensive try sickness so <laughs> yes. so the thing about if you want to safeguard your property you will do things to, to keep it so some of the things you do when you when you purchase items one of the things that you should do is actually try and record all the pertinent information of that item whether it be the serial and model number etc take a photograph download it into your into your arm um, in cyberspace so that it will be easier to you know because sometimes some people have these items and they don't even know what is the serial number because they might have thrown away the receipt or the package, etc. Try and practice these things. Put some sort of marking that you could later identify. Do something just in the event that is taken. In addition to that, have some sort of tool shed, something that you could probably keep it away from the eyes of the public. All of that. You know, um, and again, too, all you have to do is just practice good sense. You know, don't just leave things because it's yours and you feel nobody should not come in. Or have a dog or something. Do some kind of thing, you know, that you could alert you in the event somebody is coming into your premises to do something. Right? And of course, get the nearest police station or the emergency numbers so that you could reach out in the event that you have been faced with a real-time situation. That's right. So, ladies and gentlemen, we, are, we have a responsibility also to take care and to safeguard our property from persons wanting to invade our space and intrude and take what does not belong to them, things that we worked hard for. So try to um, safeguard your, your property by fencing and building the tool shed and having a dog and a camera. As costly as it might sound, it will end up saving you in the long run. Thank you so much, Superintendent um, Kirk, for being here with us this morning and giving us some insight as to what happened over the weekend and how we can safeguard our property. Ladies and gentlemen, we are so happy that you stayed with us right throughout the morning show on Tobago Updates. I am Adana Kambi, and of course, we are going to leave you here this morning. But before we go, of course, and heading over into Tobago Notes, we ask you to continue to share the live, share the live, share the live.